Hi guys, it's Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the electrochemical process that happens in the brain for a lot of us as we are growing up and sometimes trauma can disrupt that process and so we're going to be talking about that it's a very important thing that i haven't touched yet but little by little i i've been bringing up the neurobiological and the neurochemical process of the brain it's extraordinarily important for those of us who have experienced and are interested in trauma so thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed and for those of you who are new to this channel have absolutely no idea what we talk about on this channel i welcome you to hit the subscribe button so you can stick around with us all right i'd love to have you uh, the benefits for you in today's video is that you're going to learn about the electrochemical process of the brain and I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about this stuff so I'm not going to be like uh, teaching you anything new I'm sure but I do want to highlight some very important pieces all right so let's just go ahead and get started it'll be a pretty brief video at least I'm going to try to achieve that so when we are talking about the brain which is something I've been talking about now for a while at the end of the video I'm going to post uh, some resources um, at the end of the video and down in the description box uh, that involves my videos where I talk about the brain uh, because I think it's important that we understand where our behaviors and our emotions and our resiliency and our trauma derives from. We as humans tend to believe that mental health challenges are strictly behavioral, right? Because it's the only thing that we can see. It's the only thing that we make sense out of, right? Because we can actually visualize it. We can see it. It's objective. But one of the things that we fail to recognize is that mental health has a lot to do with the chemical processes or processes in the brain. Chemicals, neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, uh, uh, epinephrine, um, epinephrine, norepinephrine. <laughs> these are huge words, guys. So serotonin, uh, dopamine, all of these things um, have a lot of influence on the brain and we need to to understand them now i'm sure a lot of you know about norepinephrine serotonin and dopamine as being extraordinarily important primarily serotonin and norepinephrine in the management of depression uh but a lot of you uh you know have a little bit of a hard time piecing together that wait a minute there's other processes going on in the brain it's not just norepinephrine it's not just serotonin but it's also amino acids okay that have a lot to do with how the brain function functions and how it communicates what when I talk to my clients about uh, brain neurology or brain science one of the things that I explained to them is that the brain has a communication style and the communication style is dependent upon the electrochemical processes that happens. All right. So let's just jump into that. All right. So let's say you are a child and you are living in a household where it's a little bit difficult for you to be a free spirited, happy child. And one of the reasons for that is trauma. You are in a household where there's domestic violence. There's also emotional and psychological abuse. There's neglect. There's malnourishment. Uh, the parents are substance abusers, right? So you're trying to grow up in this unstable and unhappy environment, which triggers the electrochemical process. It actually triggers the electrochemical process. What happens is the electrochemical process starts, right? It is triggered. Um, it's almost like dominoes, right? How you set up all those, you set up all the dominoes all in the same, you know, you create like this, this cool maze with this domino set and you push one of them down and the whole thing just, right? That cool thing that we love to see. That's what happens in the brain. One thing triggers the brain and boom, here we go. It's like this whole process. It's like a, a skating rink or some kind of car track is more appropriate for this, this uh, analogy that I'm using. So uh, neurons began to shoot off, right? So that's the chemical process. Neurons communicate by way of electrical signals, right? They're on those electrical signals. There's what's called um, atoms and dendrites, okay? And I'm going to put those words over here so that you can see what I mean. Dendrites are kind of like, are, are kind of like um, trees with like little like pieces that stick out like bark are like branches okay so dendrites are kind of like let me see if i can write this down for you guys let me go over here and get a marker because you can see it better this way 
All right, so, so this is what a dendrite looks like, okay? So dendrite is like this branch, and it has like, you know, these odd like extensions, right? So this is how it looks, guys, okay? This is a dendrite, okay? That's a dendrite. And what's happening with this dendrite is you've got electrical processes going from that dendrite, right? And it's like bouncing off of these little like stems, right? So there's like a lot of electrical activity going on here, okay? All right, just to give you a visual, it's like all this electrical activity going on on this 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 long structure with these little like like branches on them, right? All right, so what's happening is that that neurons are communicating with other neurons, and so there's like this huge chemical process happening, right? All right, so what's happening is there's communication in the brain happening with these neurons and the dendrites and the atoms, and then the neurotransmitters begin, right? The neurotransmitters are the chemicals in the brain, uh, the serotonin, the norepinephrine, the epinephrine, the, um, uh, what's the other one? Dopamine, right? So there's all this communication going on. And so the neurotransmitters are now beginning to flow as well. And so receptors, which are on the end of the branch-like structure, okay? So... I'm gonna show you what these neurons kind of look like, okay? So remember that branch I showed you? See, these are neurons, those circles there, these are neurons and they're all communicating with each other, the receptors, I should say. And they are the, they are the, they are the, the pieces of the brain that communicates with each other, right? They receive signals and they send signals, okay? They receive signals, right, from touch, from sight, smells, uh, from sensory stimulation on the body, right? So those receptors, they send and they receive data. And that data actually changes structures in the brain. So you're a child and you're in a traumatic environment. You don't know what's going on around you. You are struggling, right? You're depressed, you're anxious, you're lonely. The, the sights that you're seeing frighten you. The things that you're hearing frightens you. You're just kind of a little bit all over the place emotionally. Your impulses are out of control. It's not just the behavioral stuff that we're looking at, right? We're now digging deeper and now we're looking at the neurological piece of this and the, the chemicals in the brain have been triggered by everything that's going on in your environment that's affecting your sensories and uh, neurotransmitters are flowing. There may or may not be enough of that going on because remember, if you have low levels of norepinephrine and serotonin, you're more likely to be depressed. So maybe there's not enough neurotransmitter being produced, right? But sometimes uh, there's an overproduction of neurotransmitters and that can cause another syndrome known as serotonin syndrome. And I'm gonna post the definition of that over here, but to keep us focused on the brain science here, um, the neurotransmitters are starting to flow and the atoms and the dendrites are all communicating with neurons and the receptors are sending and receiving information. So there's a lot going on in the brain, right? Things that you can't see with the naked eye is going on in the brain. All of this will determine how resilient you're gonna be down the line. I'm gonna post the video right up here where I talked about resiliency and I talked about the resiliency questionnaire. And you can actually take that questionnaire in the comment, in the, I'm sorry, the description box below, not the comment section, but the description box below. Uh, in that video, you will get the uh, resiliency questionnaire. Now, this has all, all of almost like all of your fate in its hands right the way that the brain is going to process your trauma the way that the brain is going to process your reactions to the trauma it is all going to have some kind of influence on how resilient you're going to be down the line can we stop it ahead of time not really if you're growing up in a traumatic and neglectful environment it's gonna be really difficult to stop things, right? Now, remember those protective factors that I talked about? I'm gonna post the video up here for you. That those those protective factors, right? Counseling, medication, a good household, right? Supportive network, good grades, a good school, a good neighborhood, right? Two working parents, all of that, those are protective factors. They can shield you and protect you 
from the trauma that maybe you went through prior to being adopted, for example. Or maybe it can protect you from, you know, the environment you had with your parents uh, if you were taken out of that home and placed with your grandparents. So those are protective factors, and yes, it can shield you. But let's say you don't have those protective factors and you grow up under all of that uh, abuse and neglect and trauma, then, you know, the brain is going to do all of these things. It's going to communicate with different pieces of the brain and it's going to send signals that says, okay, he's not coping well or she's not coping well. And uh, chronic stress that is maintained over a long period of time can lead to chronic disease. It can lead to mental health challenges. It can lead to uh, drug and alcohol behavior. All of these things or drug and alcohol addiction is what I'm trying to say, guys. All of these things have a connection. And that's why the ACE scale is so important for clinicians and researchers, because we need to know what happened in childhood that has affected you over the lifespan or over your life course. So these are important things, guys, to keep in mind. I'm going to post some links in the description box below for you so that you can be uh, really well-rounded in your knowledge of uh brain brain science and neurology so that you can understand what's going on inside of your brain and also so you can understand what happened to you uh as a traumatized child thank you so much for watching i will see you on friday guys we're going to go ahead and close out this week and we're going to start on another topic i think next week we're going to talk about psychopathy in men i'll see you soon bye, -bye.